Dream Shampoo presents A.B.'s Irish Rose. <laughs> what are you laughing at? What am I laughing at? I am just laughing. What's the matter? There's a log in the... Once again brings you that lovable, laughable show, Ann Nichols, Avi's Irish Rose. <laughs> well, this business of being summer hotel owners is getting more and more complicated for the two fathers, Patrick and Solomon. In their first effort at managing Looney Lake Lodge on Lake Looney in the Catskills, the fathers lost their meat chef by giving him the wrong tip on how to cook roast beef. And then suddenly getting the idea that the twins had scarlet fever, they frightened several hundred guests into planning a mass exodus. Well, the twins haven't got scarlet fever, but how are the guests to be convinced? That's the question as Mr. and Mrs. Cohen wake up the next morning in their luxurious suite at the hotel. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. Come here, honey. Did you sleep up here? How did you sleep up here? How did I sleep up here with my eyes closed? <laughs> Just like anywhere else. Why are you making so much noise, Papa? It's so early in the morning. Early in the morning? Why, it's a quarter to nine. Yes, a quarter to nine. Oh, you, 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 let me get up. Who's stopping you? <laughs> Go on. Where are my shoes and my stockings and my, and my everything else? Where, where are they? Why are you getting so excited? Who's excited? I'm just hungry. <laughs> Breakfast is first only until nine o'clock. Don't worry, darling. I know all about the dining room. What about it? Well, breakfast is served from seven sharp to nine sharp. But after nine sharp, if you know the right man, you can eat until twelve. <laughs> from twelve sharp to two sharp, they serve lunch. But after two sharp, if you know the right man, you can eat until six. From six sharp to eight sharp, they serve dinner. But after eight sharp, after eight sharp, you have to go hungry. <laughs> Understand? Look, Papa Lou. What is it, Mama Lou? Why did Solomon go around last night telling people that Trinches have scarlet fever? Does he want to lose all the hotel guests? It was the fault of the echo. Solomon only yelled the news to A.B. out on Echo Point. Uh, and people in the hotel heard the Echo. The twins don't have scarlet fever, only a stomach rash. If there had been a train last night, lots of guests would have checked out. If we have no guests, we, we, we can't pick up a floor show. A floor show? Sure, to entertain the guests at night. Solomon, Mr. Murphy, and me, we were going to pick the dancing girls today. Papa, who said you were going to pick the girls? I, I did, Priscilla. But I didn't. So you don't pick. <laughs> Stay away from dancing girls. But darling, Solomon and Mr. Murphy, they only want me to look at them. Well, if you want to look at a girl, look at me. <laughs> I'm plenty for you. Mamma, you're even more than plenty. <laughs> Thank you. To tell her. Look, ain't I got the skin of a young girl? Sure you have, honey. But maybe you should give it back to the young girl. <laughs> you are getting it a little wrinkled. Yes, Patrick, before 
Bobby is a fair price. Our guests are checking out by the dozen. Oh, yes, darling. From now on, they'll be staying away by the dozen. But they're driving the court in the sugar. Listen. Listen how they're ringing the bell to pay their bills. Oh, come on. Let's go out on the veranda. All right. Now, what can we do? I have been telling everybody that fingers don't have scholar fever. And so have I. Yeah, Papa Murphy, you know, if this keeps up, the hotel will be empty by noon. It'll be before that, Abby. Long before that, Abel. They all want to catch the 1010 train. Yeah, look at all those taxi cabs on the drive there. <sighs> Looks like they've called every cab in the whole township. The driveway is lined with them. And that ain't what you call a silver lining. It certainly isn't. And those that don't leave by taxi cab, they will go to the railroad station in our bus. We will be helping them go. Well, you can't expect them to walk, Dad. You know, it's four miles to the station. Abel, I spent years educating you to be smart. Couldn't you get an idea how to stop them? Well, guys, Dad, I, I don't know. Once people get panicky, they're pretty hard to handle. Hello, boys. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, Mamela and Mr. Cohen. Have you figured any way to stop the guests from checking out? No, have you? Well, I'll put my brains to work. Papa, up here your brains are on a vacation until Labor Day. But this is cold. Solomon, you keep quiet. Your brains are on a vacation the whole year round. <laughs> Besides, I'm mad at you two fathers. You're mad at us? Why? Why? Because you two uh, talked my poor little papa into picking dancing girls. What do you mean we talked him into it? We couldn't keep him out of it. So? I said, Why are you me? Papa, don't let me catch you around those girls. You hear me? Is it all right if you don't catch me? <laughs> huh, Mama? I'll answer you in two words. No. Right. Soon the girls will be here, but what good will it do with all our guests gone? Hey, look. There's Papa there. He's gone. I don't know. Maybe he stepped inside. If he went to meet those dancing girls, wait till I meet him. <laughs> Oh, 
right after shampooing. No other shampoo, not a soap in the world, leaves hair so lustrous and yet so easy to manage. Only drain with hair conditioner. So girls, for glamorous, shining hair that makes a man find you unforgettably lovely, always use Dream Shampoo with hair conditioner. And now Dream Shampoo takes you back to Avery's Irish Rose. It's just a moment after that mysterious crash we heard. Hey, Papa! Did you hear that crash? Of course I heard. Haven't I got ears? What was it? Ah, I should I know. Have I got eyes in my ears? Come quick outside. Let's see. Icicle, this is cold. Look at what Seth has done with the hotel bar. Hey, hey, hey. He's getting the boss of the owner wreck his right between the stone pillars at the hotel entrance. Wait. But an idea you are, son. The entrance is all black now. Yeah, and there are stone walls all along the road from the pillars. Oh, and now all the guests are in capitulated. Not one of those sexy scraps can get out of the road. Come on in, find everybody. I think our troubles are over. Who, who would walk four miles to the depot with baggage? Even from scarlet fever. Come on, everybody. Boy, did you hear those guests out there? Hey, look, here comes Seth. Well, that dang bus just got out of control and went into a regular tailspin. <laughs> Must have been reading my mind. Ah, uh, you heard, Seth? No, no, you couldn't hurt a tough old rooster like me. You know, Seth, I got an idea you did that on purpose. I ain't saying, Mr. Murphy, I ain't saying. But them guests ain't leaving for a while now. I Seth, I think you're wonderful. Thank you, ma'am. I'll tell that to my gal, Elvira. <laughs> Make her jealous. <laughs> Seth, we all want to thank you. Well, if you need any more ideas, just let me know. But now i got something important to do. What have you got to do? Oh, i got to set out some flowers. I think I'll start with them gold donuts. <laughs> hey, look what they're doing down with the bus. Why, you're hooking a taxi cab onto it. They're going to drag it out of the way. It's too late for them to catch the 1010. Well, they could catch the 1111 or the 1212. Or even the 1313. Now what to do? What to do? Well, yeah, I am, Mr. Cohen and little Patrickle. And here's Beckler, Mr. Cohen. Now what shall we do? I'm a I'm from Blue. Wait a minute, Patrickle. Let's see. It wouldn't do any good to take the babies outside. Everybody is too interested in the bus. Ah, uh, I got an idea. Come along to the casino, everybody. I'll hurry ahead to speak to Harry Horn of the orchestra leader. Come on, everyone. Then Papa will get an idea to think that it could be anything. It usually is. But there's a casino I heard, little chat. <laughs> You think you're going like dancing? Oh, Harry Cohen! Harry! Harry! Everybody! Uh, I, I got a go arrange with Harry Horner. What have you got that in? Some of his musicians are here. And they'll play while Lily sings. This will attract the guests back into the hotel. And then they'll see the twins are all right. What do you want to sing, Lily? Well, I like the San Fernando Valley. Do the boys know that? Sure they know it. Go ahead, boys. I'm packing my grip And I'm leaving the day Cause I'm taking a trip California way I'm gonna settle down and never roll on And make the San Fernando Valley my home I'll forget my sins I'll be making new friends where the west begins and sunset ends. Cause I've decided where your truly should be. And if the sand and the valley for me is, I think that I'll be the season. Two of us one. Stop! 
where were you born in Russia? Was I born in Russia? Of course. What part? What part? All of me. <laughs> I mean, what part of Russia you come from? Did you ever hear of Pinsk? Pinsk? Yes. I'm not from there. <laughs> Did you ever heard of Minsk? Why, certainly so. I'm not from Minsk. Did you ever heard of Omsk? Why should I? You ain't from there either. Ah, my little penguin, what a noodle you have. Who's talking about Zook? <laughs> Where do you come from? To get to my town, it's Omsk to Minsk to Pinsk. Sounds like a double play with the battle out of force. Quiet, Patrick, oh, quiet. This is a very important guy. Uh, Mr. Bagel, what could we do for you? Have you got a suite? All I need is a sitting room, a bedroom, a drawing room, a sleeping porch, and a place where I can wash my hands. Sure, oh, Mr. Bagel, that we got. Is there anything else? Boris Bagel, your distinguished visitor, wants only one more thing, my little penguin. No, no, I'm a little penguin. Mr. Bagel, what else is it you want? Boris Bagel wants a position. A position? You mean you want a job? How dare you? A bagel never accepts a job. He has to have a position. What kind of a job? Look, my little... Don't call me a penguin, I'll smear you. <laughs> what kind of a job are you after? Listen, I teach golf, I teach tennis, swimming, hiking, riding, botany. And at night, under the lights of the moon and the stars, I also teach love. <laughs> But, Mr. Bagel... And also love. Now, see here. And also love. Would you like to be our athletic director? Athletic director? Well, for you as a sideline, Bagel will do it, providing you give me five rooms and a lot of money. Listen, Bagel, that job pays $15 a week and a room in the attic. A room in the attic? And $15 a week? That's all. Didn't you talk me into it? I'll take it. running Looney Lake Lodge and Boris Bagel entertaining the guests, who knows what's going to happen, but it ought to be a lot of fun. And here's something that ought to make you really feel good when you save those waste fats to turn in at your butchers. Those waste fats not only help to make explosives to blast the Japs and the Nazis, but they're used to make medicines to help our fighting men when they get sick or wounded. Yes, those waste fats do a double duty. They help to blast the enemy, but you're also sending them on an errand of mercy to our wounded men all over the world. You see, out of those waste fats come healing medicines that are more urgently needed today than ever before. Because over in France, as well as in the Pacific, countless thousands of our men are braving death at this very moment. Those men need the things that can be made from your waste fat. So save all the used fats you can. Collect them in any handy tin can, and when you've collected about a pound... Take it to your butcher. Sure, you get two red points for that pound of fat, but what will really count is the feeling that you've done something to help our men out there on the fighting front. Be sure to join us again next week at this same time for another adventure in the lives of the Murphys, the Levies, and the Corps. Irish Rose is dedicated to the spirit of freedom and equality.